Bang! Neves and Ives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is at work. And today, we are doing the review on the Spartan Harsey folder. Thanks to Mr. Amazing for giving us this knife among lots of other knives. I cannot thank him enough. Um, I feel truly blessed. And I, I, I really, really appreciate you, man. Thank you. I've gotten to experience knives I never would have thought. So, I... I it's amazing. Let's get some size comparisons done because we got a review ahead of us. This is a, a full-size knife, in my opinion. It's just under 9 inches, about 8.8 .8 inches, 8.9 inches, with basically a 4-inch blade. It's a 3.8, 3.9-inch blade. Here is the hinder that Mr. Amazing also sent with the blue titanium hardware that he sent. And, oh, I love this thing. Look at this. How amazing is this? And I just put a fresh edge on this thing. So, man, it just looks so good. And then the way the, the, the micarta comes through right there with the blue and the titanium. Oh, forget about it. Here's the XM24. You can see that the Spartan basically sits right in between these two. A little, uh, you know, I'm going to say right in between. Because it's about the same distance longer of this one that it is shorter of this one. I think it might be, it's a little bit closer to the XM24 though. It is definitely a little bit closer to the XM24. Now, thanks to Floydian for letting me check out his 3.25 inch Spartan Harsey folder, which is... A lot, it's smaller than I thought. And I'm going to put up the, uh, where's the thumb stud version? Um, yeah, here's the thumb stud version of the, the, uh, the Hinder XM18. They are the same length. So basically it's the same size as the three inch. Now we're not doing a review on the Spartan Harsey, uh, the little mini folder today, but it will be coming up soon. But I thought I'd show you the difference because looking at it on GP knives and in people's videos, I thought it was a little bigger than it is. Very cool. Um, one more size comparison. Here is the X or sorry, <laughs> the Hogue Ritter RSKMK1, which is also the Patreon giveaway this month. So if you want to win a knife like this, this knife or possibly a different knife if you already have this knife and you're the winner we will substitute a different knife but usa made awesome knife so yeah all you gotta do is become a patreon and you have a chance to win that but you want to do it soon because we are pulling that giveaway very soon so spartan harsey folder this is definitely one of my grail knives or was one of my grail knives finally got it and I can't even say finally, but it's so badass. I love this knife. So there are so many different versions of this. Like the, this one comes this same way with fire stones right here where the hands are. I'm going to show some pictures of that one. And you can see the stones. Then these ones usually go for about five twenty-five to five fifty. Now there are many other versions. I'm going to show a whole bunch of pictures of different kinds, different versions. There's even some from uh, monkeys, monkey edge. There's there's a lot of different versions of this, all the way down to play ti plain titanium. The the smaller one, the 3.25 version, the smaller one right here is about 395, I think, or 325. One of the two, I think it's 325 actually for the smaller one. And then the bigger ones, you know, they're across the board depending on what kind you get, anywhere from like 450 to, to probably 650 depending on the art you get and the kind you get. The artwork is Mayan, so it's called, this is called the Mayan version. Now, um, the Aztecs actually adopted their calendar from the Mayans. The Mayans calendar came first, which a lot of cultures did adopt the Mayan calendar. So, um, there are little differences, but for the most part, it's very much the same, um, at least it looks the same. 
So you can see how deeply cut this engraving is. It is very deep. It will not rub off. It is actually embedded in the titanium. You can actually see the texture difference on the artwork. It's like a polished and then on the other parts, it's kind of, it's really rough, kind of like concrete texture. And you can see how it wraps around there. Now you can also see how much I've been handling it with all the blue that's coming out. Before, when it first showed up, it was solid purple. I have been handling and loving and using this knife. And all the colors are just popping. You can see all the wear marks. It looks so beautiful that way. I love it. That's what happens with anodized knives is... Um, you know, the, the parts that you handle the most tend to uh, break in and change color a little bit. And it's turning blue. It looks so good. Now, the they did make versions of this that have gems inside the hands right here. This one didn't come with the gems, but they do have um, ver versions where the circle right there in the hands actually has a firestone. All the purple ones I've seen had that. This is the only one I've seen that didn't have it. Then the blue ones that I've seen did not have it. They were just like this one. So let's get into this blade. S35V and they are also doing S45VN now. This one's the S35 version. The blade is a drop point blade. And nicely thick or nice and thick blade stock it is a harder use thickness but it has a taper that tapers down very thin up towards the tip so it is going to be good for penetration and for cutting in this area this area of the blade does cut a lot better than the back side just because of the thickness um, it is thick behind the edge at about 25 thousandths behind the edge. So it's not going to have amazing blade geometry, but it's not that kind of knife. So regardless. Okay, so I did sharpen this thing. I didn't go all the way through all my grits. I just started with my first stone. So anything from here will just be refining. This is a 300 grit. I did lay the edge back just a little bit farther. If you rewind, you you can look at the edge the way it looked before versus the way it looks now. It did work out good. I didn't have to cut in a choil yet, but I'm thinking after maybe two more sharpenings, I'm going to probably have to cut in a choil here because I don't want the edge to go higher than my finger right here. Or, you know, then this little spot right here was basically what I'm saying. I don't mind this little spot, the the um, the plunge right here. But basically what I'll do is I'll have to cut it out just a little bit right there. Just a little nub eventually. Um, or I can sharpen all the way back here. Um, but then it'll wind up making a smile right there. So I'll just cut in the choil eventually. But the edge came out really good. It did take me a little bit longer than normally to do my first stone it took me about 15 minutes um maybe 20 minutes on the first stone it sharpened up just fine i'm gonna guess that the the hrc isn't crazy high on this s35 vn which is absolutely fine but all i mean is that it it the burr coming taking the burr off wasn't easy like a lot of times like if the hrc is really high you know um you can uh you can deburr the edge very fast it did not do that it, it it did fight me a bit not that big of a deal it happens you know lots of knives do it but the main thing that took the time was just this is a thick amount of steel now if this was really thin so like say if it was another knife that's very thin behind the edge i would have had the first stone done in three minutes you know maybe five minutes at tops um, and that's reprofiling probably, you know, maybe a little bit longer to reprofile, but I did uh, lay the edge back, so it's going to take a little bit longer. We'll look at the grip pattern, but I just wanted to show that it did sharpen up just fine. I just basically started right where they started and I dragged it from there. I, um, do you know what I mean? Like I just started right there on the stone and just started moving it. But this eventually will wind up going higher and higher and higher and higher 
and this will be left there. That's why eventually I will have to cut in a choil. Now, I don't know what grit I want to take it to since this edge, it seems like it's really laid back, but in all reality, this is only like 20 degrees, um, 19, 20 degrees. So maybe, maybe a little bit more. I didn't actually measure it perfect, but I know on my thumb about where 20 degrees is, and it was a little bit under that, not by much. So I don't know what grit I'm going to eventually take it to. I might take it really high. I might put a polish, or not a polish on there, but I might put um, a finer edge on there. But as of right now, man, this 300 grit is, whoo, this boy is sharp. Let's cut something, and then we'll get back to the video. I did enter this clip in, so we're going to go back to back in time, basically, before this thing was sharpened. That's 300 grit. Diamond stone. First stone. Now, I could um, go really high on this since the, the angle is the way it is. So, I don't know if it would look good with a polished edge or not, but technically, I could polish this and still keep a lot of bite. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I'll figure that out. But, whew, this thing is pretty sharp, so I might just keep it like this for a little while, but, man... I might, I don't know, I might go to 600, we'll see how it goes, but I wanted to show you guys how it did sharpen, you know, considering the way the grind is. You can see how the plunge grind and the sharpening is, they have a false edge back here, so you can put your finger right up there, you can choke up right around that blade. The tip is easy to get to, well, for the most part, I mean, it's a little, um, it is a little high, but you know, if you raise your hand up high enough or if, you, you know, your your wrist or whatever, you can use the tip. You mostly use belly, though, in a lot of your draw cuts. So it's not going to be the type of um, precision knife where you use uh, the tip like in a utility way. You're mostly going to use the belly. But you do have a lot of flat right here, a long bit of flat for your push cuts. The ergos are amazing. It just, these finger choil areas, my fingers just wrap right around them very nicely. This area right here, if you look, how there's these two cutouts right here. My finger just, it's like, it just wraps right around it. It feels so good. Nice and comfortable wrapping around there. The jimping is very effective. It's widespread jimping, so it's not tight jimping which adds to that and then this part right here no jimping right here but it just fits nice and snug in my palm there is jimping down here by the pinky but it is not uncomfortable it actually doesn't create really any hot spot at all it feels nice and comfortable in the hand now this jimping back here my theory is two things either one it's just well i have a couple theories so one, it's just for holding it like this because it does work. You know, mostly my my finger stopped by this jimping, but it kind of hits the back side of my thumb right there. But I feel like it's possibly for chopping so you don't slip when you're like this. Or for reverse pull um, cuts. So like if I'm cutting straps or something like that, I notice when I turn it around right here, that's when I really use it. So when I turn, I haven't done any chopping cuts, but when you turn it around and you cut like this, the jimping comes into play and it actually works pretty good like this. You really feel it hanging on to your, the pads of your finger. Now, in a stabbing grip, you know, if you need to do any penetration tasks, this is really nice. My pinky wraps right around there very nicely. And then you can use the back uh, end of the knife to put your thumb. So, very, very nice for that. The clip works just like a hinder clip. And if you don't know how a hinder clip works, it works really well. It hangs on nice and tight, but it's very comfortable in and out of the pocket. There's no snagging or grabbing You're the seam of your pants, and I like that. I don't like a knife that I can just easily just right out of my pocket. I want it to give me resistance as I pull it out of the pocket and hang on to my pocket, which this one does. But as it comes out of the pocket with tension, it doesn't snag anything. It's very a very comfortable 
feeling um, coming out of the pocket on the clip and on the seam of your pants. It's definitely not going to ruin your pants. The action. Okay, so the thumb studs are really good. They're very grippy. They bite your finger, and you can use this little pad right here to just line right up with the flat part of the, the thumb stud, and you can easily slow roll it. Now, I was told, do not take this thing apart. Let it break in itself and it will get very smooth. So that's what I've done. I have not taken this apart. I'll enter, I'll try to find some clips or pictures of this thing taken apart. I wanted to take it apart, but I also wanted to let it break in by itself. Now the pivot has one big washer on this side and then a small one on this side. Um, you can kind of see it in this, right here. You can see kind of if you really look and then if you look through here, you can see the big one on the other side. So that's what, where the smooth action is going to come from. And it is breaking in so nice. I can totally tell, like when I first got it, when I released the lock bar and drop it like that, it did not drop. It would just stay there and I had to push it. Now it drops and one little bit of effort and it closes. It's definitely getting very smooth. You have a nice pad here for reverse flick, which works very good. It is very smooth. The detent is appropriate. The slow roll is very nice. You can do it like this, or you can just put your finger right behind it and trail it around. It does not get ahead of you when you break the detent. It just stays right there. Because you do have the same tension, basically, which, like I said, it's getting very glassy, extremely glassy. Now, from here to here, you do have the detent ramp, and there is a ramp. So when you unlock it and you hit the detent ball, it's very easy to push past it, but you can feel it going past it. So, and I also feel that breaking in as well. Now, it is very, very smooth, and it's getting very luxurious. I actually like flicking and playing with it that didn't sound good but <laughs> it's nice the, the action is very nice now the access to the lock bar okay so the action to the lock bar even though it's basically even and they don't have any chamfers or anything like that it's very easy to disengage it feels kind of like a button you basically push it and it's it almost doesn't feel like you're pushing it this way it almost feels like you're pushing it inward if that makes sense, but very, very nice action. The tension from the lock bar is really nice and heavy in a good way. Now it does not have a, a, um, a steel lock bar insert. It is just a carbonized titanium frame. So, or lock bar. So, um, so it doesn't have the steel lock bar insert, but it is very smooth. I can feel that it's very snug in there. There's absolutely no stick, but it's nice and snug in there. I like that. It just lets me know how rock solid it's going to be because I can just feel how strong that lock bar is locked up in there. The, the lock or the lock face geometry is really nice it looks like it's going to last a very long time and it's locked up nice and solid especially for a titanium frame lock yeah it's not stick it's just snug i like that I do like this action. It is more of a slow roll action, but it's also very easy to flick because the thumb studs are so nice. Just great thumb studs. And I could tell this thing is going to get so damn smooth after a long time. So smooth. Now, what are some bad things? So I do have a couple bad things. One, they use the small pivot on one side and a big pivot on the other. I wish they would have just used a big one on both sides. I like big pivots. Even if they use the small one, that's fine. But... Why do that? And then on the small one, they used a big one on both sides. I I know they used this for the over-travel stop here, and we'll get into that in the small ones review. But I just wish they would have uh, did 
you know, the same size on both sides. Not a big deal at all. But this next one bothers me a little bit more. So you see the bronze hardware. It looks gorgeous. It looks beautiful. But then they have this big silver pivot. I just feel like it take, makes your eyes go towards that. Even though there's a lot here to, to pay attention to. I'm not, I'm not, it's not that big of a complaint. I just wish they would have bronzed the pivot. Um, also, you know, I know this action is going to get very glassy. But I almost wish they would have put a bigger um, washer on this side. Now, I don't think they could have. I think they could have got away with a little bit bigger. But not as big as I would have liked. You know, I would have liked them to just match it. But it's not that big of a deal. It's kind of like a Sabenza. But this thing, the sorry, not this thing, the, the cutout for the lock bar, look at how thick that, that cutout is. Look at the XM24, how tight this is. This thing is very big, that cutout. And I don't know, it's not that big of a deal, but... Yeah, so the cutout you can see for the lock bar tension is on the inside. I do like that, though. And I didn't show it, but it does have the disc, the the um, the um the lock bar stabilizer. You can see it right there. It's the same thing as this one right here. The lock bar stabilizer is just on the inside of this one, which I guess with this big cutout you can see it so it does look good when you look at it you see it through there like in the face of the mind calendar guy um another bad thing is this choil i don't mind uh, the edge just stopping i don't mind not having a sharpening choil but i just wish they would have done it like this this is the spider co manix 2 um they're basically pretty close in size I should have did a size comparison with them, but this is the XL version, not the regular version, the XL. But I wish they would have just dropped the plunge grind just like this and then brought the edge all the way to there. Here, they they have a regular plunge grind and then they have the false edge going up to the edge and the edge just begins. They could have brought the edge all the way back to here and then just had the plunge grind go straight in. Now this grind right here, you can see it's a little bit off from one side to the other, but I don't, that's not that big of a deal. I don't think it'll affect my sharpening bevel when, you know, how even it'll be. We'll see that in the future when I sharpen, but it's not that big of a deal. I just wish they would have brought the edge all the way over. So the reason, one of the reasons why I didn't sharpen it is because I wanted to show that um, before I sharpen it because I'm not sure what I'm going to do. If I'm going to put in a choil, if I'm just going to do it the same way they had, it, that's probably what I'll do but either way you know that's why I haven't sharpened it because normally I sharpen all the knives for the review and this one I did not now the next bad thing <clears throat> it's thick behind the edge now I don't care that so th that it's thick behind the edge but it's pretty thick behind the edge it's not the best cutter um, it's a harder use knife which I understand so I'm not complaining that it's like that but the the blade geometry is not good at all. It, it is thick and it is like pushing a swedge through something. But that's the type of knife it is. It's not your ultimate slicing knife. It's a harder use knife. This knife is made for the harder tasks. And some people would argue that, well, yeah, it's just going to be harder now, you know, to do those harder tasks because it's going to be harder to cut things. Well, not necessarily because the jobs that this thing is for, it's not for your all-time slicing. It's for cutting. So if I need to cut a rope, that's it's going to cut it the same. If I need to chop something, it's going to chop it the same. If I need to to pry with something, it's going to do it better than something that'll break. If, you know, you see what I'm getting at? Like, it's for the one-cut jobs, you know? Cut a rope, cut a string, cut a box, open something up, you know? Um, you get what I'm saying. It's not for your repeated slicing, you know, knife, like a chef knife. It's not that kind of knife which is okay. The stop pin is the same stop pin for the open position as the closed position, and it is nice and big. I do like that. Um, I'm trying to show it, but you can see it right there in the closed position and then the open position. It's pretty big, decent size. I do like seeing big stop pins. I love seeing the big standoffs, the big stop pins. 
it just looks so tough and good now there is no weight relief on this i don't mind that though because it just adds to the, the, the weight and i kind of like this thing being as heavy as it is so zero complaints on that um really there are no more complaints um i will say this thing had a fantastic factory edge so um it, I, I barely tuned it up. I think I stropped it twice, but in all reality, I mean, it, it just held up really good. It did not have a burnt edge. And yeah, I'm really enjoying carrying, using, and loving on this thing. I was a little nervous at first, like wondering, like, man, I don't want to scratch this thing, um, yada, yada. But then I thought about it, like, I'm not giving this thing away and I'm not selling it. I love this thing. Why would I not want this thing to to get worked with and get used and become mine and it becomes mine by putting a new edge on it putting my edge on there putting my scratches on there and i love that that's the beauty of uh, a hand tool you know i've i have um a strong relationship with hand tools because I've worked with hand tools my whole life. I've always worked with a, um, you know, a tool pouch on my, uh, around my waist and, you know, with tools. So I really like tools and, um, the thought of a tool being so beautiful and having the artwork it has, but still being a precision tool or still being a tough tool, still being a tool that, uh, you know, is, is well built. But yeah, it looks so beautiful. I love that. I think it's awesome. And I feel very, very, very lucky to have gotten this. Thank you, Mr. Amazing. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, Floydian, for letting me borrow the little guy. This video will be coming soon. I love you guys. Peace.